Welcome, everybody. Uh, welcome to um, today's episode. And um, today we're going to meet um, a Chinese medicine practitioner, a really incredible Chinese medicine practitioner. Um, and uh, before that, I just wanted to remind you what um, the Healing Shift podcast is all about. So these are podcasts that I've been hosting um, for quite some time now. And um, the podcasts are to get behind um, the process of healing in thought leaders, in expert guides, in caretakers, in teachers, in leading practitioners, and really get into their mindset, learn more about how they've managed to develop their awareness, um, you know, really uh, evolve their states of consciousness. So actually they, they become less attached to themselves and the work and the projects that they facilitate end up supporting communities, end up supporting really, you know, humanity, you know, where many of us actually can be held back by our ego. Um, so these podcasts are really conversations to even consider that we are able to move humanity forward and actually birth a new earth. Um, so today I am delighted to introduce you to Kat Chu. She's a lady I have known um, for since 2017, for over four years now. Isn't that incredible? Yeah. Um, and Kat is, um, I would describe Kat, Kat is a trained educator with, um, uh, with, a, uh, with a, a medical practice, you know, a consultant in Chinese medicine um, with a very strong background in energy healing. And the cat I know is very passionate about leading people closer to their highest potential. Um, cats helped thousands of people, men and women, escape negative patterns and cultivate a positive sense of self, um, as well as restructuring their relationships. I know that's been a big part of your work um, with themselves and also with their loved ones. Um, and she offers her services in the UK and also globally. We actually met when Kat lived in Nottingham and she ran a community clinic, which you're all going to get to hear about. Um, and also we actually co-founded an altruistic project in 2017. Actually, we met in 2016. So because the project launched in 2017 and that was a mass meditation. So we will talk about a little bit about that on this um, session as well. So welcome, Kat. Thank you so much for um, giving us some of your time. And um, so Kat, you are a Chinese medicine practitioner through and through, you know, it's almost as if as soon as you were birthed, you knew what you were here to do. Um, so when you look at your life, what, what, what experience really, what would you say was the experience that pre prepared you for the path that you've taken? So taking you in this direction, rather than leading you into something else. I mean, in a way, when I look at you, I think, was it an assignment? Do you feel you've been given an assignment? <laughs> um, well, I mean, yeah, sometimes it does feel like that. Um, I mean, I think as most young people, I've not, I've not actually uh, practiced Chinese medicine in a professional capacity for my whole life. Um, as with most teenagers, I had the rebellious instinct um, and went off and did lots of other fascinating things, wanted to go and have a look at the world, uh, was obsessed with music and things like that. So I kind of um, distanced myself in a certain extent from it. But um, when I look back, really, that was uh, the process of me finding myself within it, really. I think it's uh, quite difficult when you're born into a reality where there's so much expectation um, from a professional point of view, like, well, this is what the family do, this is what you will do you know, this is such a, a gift and everything. So, you know, without those experiences, I wouldn't have been able to find myself. Um, and it was by doing that really, that is allowed me to kind of create my own unique process, my own uh, way of doing things. Because, you know, as practitioners, really it's ourselves that we're giving to people, you know, and it's our knowledge and experience and capacity. Um, that really pushes us in the direction we want to go. You know, mm. one of the things, you know, especially in Chinese medicine, you'll see, and I'm sure it's the same in Ayurveda, everyone has a different way of doing things, which people find really difficult in the West because um, they're like, well, how can this person be doing this and how can, but it works for those people. You know, we find a way of interpreting the system 
um, and applying it to the people that we work with that uh, is our own unique kind of set of features, our USP, I suppose. Yeah. Um, so I'd always been more spiritually kind of called, really. I think part of the difficulty I find with um, some of the acupuncture Chinese medicine community is it's very much um, had to kind of put on the hat of a, a very scientific process. Um, and part of the difficulty in that is it, it's lost uh, some of the beauty and the mysticism of the spiritual discourses and the ancient teachings where it came from. Um, and I think the beauty is now it's at a point where we can start to reintroduce um, that depth of thought um, and process back into Chinese medicine. Um, so, you know, I'd always, even when I was at university, I was asking all the questions and the professors would just look at me like, what are you going on about? I seem to be interested in the other aspects to everyone else. Um, and then personally for me, um, I had a couple of experiences when I was working in uh, Bosnia in Sarajevo, um, which I guess you would kind of uh, call an initiation <laughs> more than anything, um, where um, I just was shown things and I had such a tangible experience um, I think with sort of spirit and the knowledge that comes through um, that it at that point I kind of completely turned on my heel um, and started to follow a different kind of path which was my own um, and it was like all of a sudden everything that I'd learned I could see it from a new viewpoint and it was like a real oh that's what it is um, and it, it became in an instant sort of beautifully simple but at the same time, just so much deeper and expressive than I'd ever realised it could be. Um, and that's what's really kind of pushed me through on the path that I'm on now, really, and taken me into this little alleyway <laughs> um, that I'm in. Yeah. Do you think, I mean, when I listen to you, do you think, I mean, those moments, um, I, you know, relate in, in, in many ways. And those moments, do they... You know, they, they I, you know, do, do you feel sort of, did you feel liberated actually from the traditional training that you'd had? You know, maybe the, the sort of the copy and the paste, you know, these are the modules and this is how you learn and this is how you practice. And um, so, you know, so, so if that is the case, um, shouldn't more medicine, pra Chinese medicine practitioners, you know, be looking to maybe delve deeper into themselves um, in the sense of um, going more into pure awareness and actually because um, the evolution that comes through that, like you say, can support your practice in a much more deeper way. Yes, I mean, definitely that, you know, that is something that I think a lot of people miss out on. You know, it's a very academic forum. You know, when you look at what's going on a lot in Chinese medicine, um, and there seems to be, I mean, people are coming through now and there always have been great people, um, but they've always been kind of sidelined in, in certain aspects. Um, and I understand myself now, I believe that without having that depth of experience and understanding, um, it just confuses everything else because it's the foundation of what we do, mm, yeah. you know, to, to be, you know, to be able to understand the universe, the dynamic laws, energy as it works and as it holds, you know, is completely fundamental to everything we do, you know, and especially within the university system, you know, I felt, although, you know, I, I finished my degree and everything, um, and with a lot of things, I always felt quite uncomfortable because I've always been a bit of a why person. <laughs> um, and I, I always got to the point with everyone where my whys were beyond their knowledge. Mm. Um, and it was very, you know, well, this is just how it is. Um, and really when we look at the Tao and things like that, we, we understand that, you know, there are no limitations, everything is wholeness. Mm. You know, even when we look at duality, you know, duality is not there to um, be performed, it's there to show us the separation of wholeness. And to be able to understand that there is no right or wrong, no left or right, everything returns back to itself. You know, so this, um, you know, idealistic kind of academia and 
this way of looking at it is in terms separation itself. Yeah, you know, yeah. It separates us from what is. So do you have a sense, this journey that you've been on, do you have a sense of how people can tune into their truth, you know, with more depth, with more authenticity than is possible through education alone? Say somebody, you know, they're really inspired. They want to go and study um, Chinese medicine. They want to become a Chinese medicine practitioner. It's a sort of minimum four year degree before you even start all your case studies. Um, so so what would you yeah, what would you say there? Yeah, I mean. The thing is, you know, those I think are the aspects that are missing out of the education system at the moment. You know, as I said, it's academic. You know, there was no um, kind of focus on meditation um, through finding oneself, through understanding that as practitioners and healers, you know, it's through our own expression, you know, that we create healing. You know, we are we are not really doing anything. We are just the guides, you know, but, you know, I've, you know, I sort of say to people that, you know, it was traditionally known as the healing arts. Mm. And now we seem to have chopped off the bit that's the art, mm. you know, it's just healing. And, you know, even as practitioners, and I was it myself, you know, when I first came out of uni and when I first kind of really got into the healing, you know, typical wounded healer, I wanted to go out and save the world. <laughs> Me too. You know, and that, but that was my own oh, kind of yeah, thing within yeah. me. Yeah. You know, and, you know, through kind of taking a step back from that and realizing that, you know, you can't build a successful healing practice uh, that's results driven. Mm. Mm. You know, it's about healing people and they need the time and the space mm. and the ability to move at their own pace, you know, and, if they're not ready, they're not ready. You know, we've all worked with people where, you know, they go away and they're, oh, this is brilliant. You know, it's all gone. And they're back three weeks later mm -hmm. and we're back to ground zero. Mm -hmm. You know, and personally for me, you know, I began to understand that where I could get the people who wanted to heal, I, I myself didn't know where they needed to be. Mm -hmm. And I needed to find that within myself to show them. You know, I can't lead people to something I don't understand, you know, and this is, I think, the great difficulty is that we're taught, you know, where well, you've got a piece of paper now, you've done 1500 hours, that's it, you're ready, mm -hmm. you know, um, and then, you know, there you are day one, I guess it's like your driving test, you know, all of a sudden the instructor's not there and you're like, oh, what do I do, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, whether people are like it or not, you know, there's, there's a, a lot of kind of a, uh, you know, soul searching in the first few kind of years, really, um, to understand what you are doing and, and to be able to disconnect, um, to come out of a place where it's not ego based. Mm. You yeah. know, I am healer, you are patient. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. You've got to work with people. And to do that, you need to understand yourself to be able to see the reflection, which is where duality comes in within them mm -hmm. and understand where you can open them up to aspects of healing. Yeah, and like you say, that takes time. You know, I think yeah. any, any, any practitioner, you know, whether Western or Eastern, you know, that it, it, it takes time to really be able to connect with somebody on that sort of, on that energetic level and actually understand, you know, absolutely where they're at. Like you say, I mean, I was teaching a class yesterday and, and it kind of came up in that class as well. I was talking about Ayurveda and emotional well-being and, um, you know, one of the students on the class is a nutritionist and, um, you know, when we look at all the tools, nutrition is obviously a big aspect of, of, of healing if I'm working with a client. Um, but also there's many other aspects to it as well. And and you might, you know, again, it's it's that's one aspect that they might commit to. But then the other things, like you say, it's trial and error and it and it takes time. But I also I agree with you. You know, I it's, it's taken me time to really understand that. And um, and this this really takes me to this sense of. You know, again, when I think of you, Kat, and, and, and now, wow, I mean, having known you really for actually five years, I realise it's 2016. Um, you know, you are someone that I really probably actually the person in my life who I think has genuinely committed to very, very big altruistic projects. And I think that's 
incredibly brave because you know we all want to um, commit to you know projects that genuinely help community and humanity um you know doing it is another thing you've done it you know you actually ran your um, community clinic in nottingham over a five-year period you saw thousands of, of people in that clinic um and and you know and then you you know you've that clinic you've abandoned that clinic prior to lockdown and now i know you've moved you know obviously you're on a, a, a dip, you know your your life is in is transcended into a new <laughs> experience for you which is wonderful so I wanted to just touch on this a little bit because also you've um you know you've also worked as a volunteer with victims for war um also i should mention you know we along with some other women co-founded the unplugged space project which was a big mass meditation project it took us nine months to you know to do all that work and birth that project purely altruistic um and uh, so it's all very noble, you know, let's pat ourselves on the back, yeah. it's all very noble. Um, but, you know, you, can I ask you, do you obtain any positive internal reward from these behaviours? Well, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, not what I expected is probably the answer. Um, having come, it is because come, in a nutshell, yeah. it's at the cost of your resources and energy. Yeah. Um, and it's also part of my journey as well, you know. So, I mean, I guess the gifts on it really is um, that it's allowed me to see a lot more clearly um, how certain aspects of <laughs> this humanness work. Um, it's um, allowed me to actually satiate a great need within me. Um, being brought up in a Buddhist reality, um, being brought up in that kind of community, um, you know, the kind of outside vision of, um, you know, community respect, of humility, of being in service is something that I was brought up very much to believe and understand was the kind of pinnacle um, of this human experience, you know, to, to give and devote ourselves. Um, what I found was that um, there are some people that will let you give and devote yourself until you are no more. Mm. Um, but that in itself is not a reflection of you. It is a reflection of them. Um, and it's taught me to disconnect myself. Um, it's taught me to see how much um, ego <laughs> is involved with altruism in certain aspects as well, um, to kind of paint these pictures, I guess, of success, um, but a different kind of success to fame and wealth. But I guess it comes from a very similar kind of energetic pathway sometimes. Um, as with most things, you know, I got to the point where I found myself, you know, where people thought I was, you know, I knew I was respected in the community. Um, I knew that there were certain people who, you know, I have, well, there were lots of people I've changed their lives. <laughs> um, but, you know, it didn't satiate the need that I had to remember myself. Um, and part of the difficulty in the end was, um, you know, I was eaten up by it, you know, and there wasn't any space for me to be myself. Mm. You know, um, I very much became the kind of um, caricature that people had painted of me. Mm. Um, and although there were certain aspects of that that I am still very proud of and, um, you know, I'm happy to be able to call that part of my story. Um, there are many, many aspects of it that made me feel very uncomfortable. Mm. Um, however, it's only by having the ability to recognise those, to study them and to work through them um, that I've now literally over kind of lockdown, what divine timing that was. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I think, you know, you know, I closed, I took the decision a year and a half before, mm -hmm. but my business literally closed the day that lockdown started mm -hmm. in 2020. Um, and it just, the universe just gave me the perfect excuse to really, you know, I released all of that. I came out of a, a long-term relationship as well you know and it was total life transformation you know as we see it now you know family and career mm. um but it gave me this beautiful opportunity to be able to 
really study the depths of self and re-emerge um, with all the learnings and teachings um, of what I'd learned, um, mm -hmm. but to be able to help people still, mm -hmm. but without sacrificing myself in the process. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's an important lesson to learn because uh, again, I, I I relate in a different way. You know, for many years, I um, you know it was an, it, I wanted to train as many therapists as possible in a year. That was my thing. You know, I thought the more therapists I train, the more good I'm doing in the world. You know, because ultimately we you know the the, the tools then have uh, are able to scale and and you know and um, and uh, but again, yeah, on reflection of that. Um, I've, uh, you know, learned, learned a lot through that process as well. So, you know, it sounds like we've both been on this, um, on this uh, journey of our own awareness, you know, and, and actually um, also, uh, you know, this is all learning more about yourself, like you say, and, and actually behaviours and how, um, you know, that was then. And then also that, but then also that learning transcends into something else. And, um, and I feel, you know, that's, 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 you know, that's a really important part of actually um, evolving as a practitioner and evolving as somebody who's able to support other people in healing as well, that we can actually recognize um, that and, um, and we can see, you know, see things, you know, that crystallization of being able to see something from a much more higher perspective. And you only get that really if you've been through the experience and lived it. Yeah. Um, so, but, you know, you did, you did run a community clinic at the end of the day, um, you know, and had phenomenal results. I know you did, because I know even, you know, the allopathic doctors would be recommending their patients come and see you. And, um, you know, the reputation that you have is, is, you know, is second to none. So, you know, do you feel that you have a sense of situation of how situations are created um, through political, social, economic disruption, you know, in the fact of, our, well, in the sense of our ability to really experience good health, because you've mm. seen it, you know, you've seen it at all different levels. Yeah, I mean, where to start? Yeah. <laughs> or, um, I mean, I think, I think for me, um, again, you know, almost kind of coming back to the last point, really, about this want to kind of go and heal the world, you know, the, the very kind of fractious thing that I see, especially with everything that's gone on, um, is a very kind of patriarchal model in society mm. um, based on the ideal that there's only one winner. You know, mm. I have to train all these people. I have to heal everyone. I have to do this. I have to succeed, you know. And what I have learned over the last few years, which has, again, helped me really step back from this um, kind of connection with feeling, um, you know, drained by others, um, is that there's always more than one winner. Mm. And I think that kind of level of competition um, really um, brings about a kind of attachment, mm. you know, and, you know, in any system that we look at in ancient theory, you know, attachment is really the main cause of pain and suffering. You know, what we think sh something should have been like, how we feel we should have done um, what we think we want or need, you know, for lack and things like this. So, you know, I think part of the difficulty with those systems is that people are so connected to what happens on the outside, you know, to, to outer situations and outer realities that it doesn't give them the time to remember who they are. You know, it gives us a suit to put on. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and when we take it off, we're left feeling very naked in society, you know, mm. um, and, and kind of who wants that? You know, we rebuild, you know, or redesign uh, our own clothes, which are much more comfortable and they're our style. And, you know, when we get there, we think, wow, look at me, you know, but in the, in the midst of it, there's this great difficulty. Um, and that's what I've always found, you know, with people is, you know, they I want to heal, I want to heal, but you know, when you talk to them about where they're going to need to go and what aspects of their life they really need to redress, they're not even aware that they are aspects of their existence. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, it's, you know, it's like you're talking in a foreign language to them. 
Um, you and, know, it's, oh. and, it's, and I think the, that convers and, and actually the conversation ends up actually being on a very superficial level. You yes, know, it's there's no there's no real like you said actually at the beginning of this conversation that actually truly to um, support someone in their healing takes time and um, it takes it, you know and there's this effort there as well it's not something that you know it's not a it's not a it's not a numbers game you know it's not it's not I've trained this xyz amount of therapists and you know and and, and hu humanity is going to you know be benefited from that yes an element um you know, and I think they're saying, you know, probably it's that realization, isn't it? You know, you have the clinic, you see a lot of people, but ultimately each person, it takes time, um, you know, and also with yourself, this. So I like this idea of, of and that, you know, of that you when you stepped out of that role, it was almost like taking a mask off, Kat. Yeah. So how, how did that feel for you? Um strange <laughs> um it was one that I'd worn for so long so yeah. um you know it's it's given me the the space it's given me the ability to really and be in a much better and deeper place but to completely reinvent myself which has been um fascinating joyous exhilarating hard at times I guess um but it's made me be able to see that in others um and it's been a fascinating experience because, you know, when I started to change my life, I think what was actually the most difficult was to step out of the old reality. You know, there was ways I behaved and patterns that I had that were still from that system um, that I kind of carried with me for a while. Mm. Um, and it made me realise how kind of indoctrinated mm. some of these issues are. Um, and, you know, again, I was lucky enough to have the time because, you know, there is part of that, as you say, you know, kind of, we have to be good at everything and we have to be good at it now. You know, there's none of this like space and allowing for things anymore. Um, and I think, to be honest, you know, whether we like it or not, when you look back at the last year or so, you know, it has given us all that ability if we choose to look at that to look at our lives in that way mm. um and for me you know it was first of all I was like oh what am what am I going to do you know but then when I'd sat and thought about it it was you know well I, I can do whatever I want you know I have all these things that I've learned all this education all these skills where do I want to take it now um and that was almost kind of scary in itself because there were no limitations to it for the first time in my life um mm. And so, yeah, that was kind of scary because it was like on the precipice and like, oh, which way do we go? Um, but, you know, I've kind of walked into it now. I'm more and more comfortable with where I'm at. Um, you know, and part of the, dip, you know, part of the thing with that, I guess I'd always been seen as such a strong character. Mm. You know, I held up the community. I healed people. I was very altruistic. I was powerful. I was strong. Um, and what that had done, what that mask had done was it had masked the kind of vulnerability the feminine aspects of myself so you know it was about unearthing that part of myself and learning how to reintegrate the yin and the yang literally yeah, yeah. To, to be more whole to be more me hmm. and did you this process that you took I mean if, if people were brought up to have the kind of self-awareness and balance that energy medicine makes possible, um, then, um, you know, that, the, you know, we may see a different world. It's, you know, that, that is a question for you, but also, you know, that, that's, the, that's the intent and the core of your work. So how did you work with, with that knowledge, you know, to help yourself transcend through, or did you bring in a mentor or, you know, what did that process look like? Um, well, yeah, I mean, I I kind of sat with it for a while. Um, and one of my kind of uh, the things that I did do, you know, in, in the past was, you know, I was, um, you know, part of the kind of strength thing was like, well, I'll do it all on my own. Um, <laughs> and, um, you know, a kind of big learning for me was to take that investment for, for myself, you know, um, to, to study again, but in different aspects. You know, there was aspects of mentorship. You know, I went... To, I went to lots of things as we always, I'm sure you do, you know, and you, you, you end up in some of them and think, what am I doing here? <laughs> but, you know, there was a few beauties of truth. And, you know, I spent a lot of time 
soul searching, I gave myself the space. I gave myself permission to allow myself to fall and to pick myself mm-hmm. back up again, mm-hmm. to allow myself to try new things and, you know, not like the taste of it and spit it out and move on to the next dish. Um, you know, so it was that kind of process really that allowed me to begin to explore more avenues. Um, and then eventually seren- through serendipity as ever, um, you know, I've started a couple of mentorships um, and they've really developed my connection um, with basically spirit, you know, um, to the point where, you know, I can sit quite happily and admit in public now <laughs> that, you know, I will sit in the mornings and have uh, conversations with uh, forms of energy such as Kuan Yin, forms of energy uh, such as Buddha, you know, um Obviously, a lot of them turn up in a Chinese sense for me, but, you know, occasionally I get like Sananda, who's the Ascended Master, who is, I guess, uh, Jesus in Western terms. Um, and, you know, the the understanding and knowledge that I get from these forms of energy um, and the tangible connections that I have with them has kind of completely evolved my reality, mm. um, you know, alongside beautifully the teachings that I already had you know if I hadn't had the education if I hadn't gone through all of that and learned it all and had the experience I wouldn't be able to um really appreciate and uh, formulate the kind of concepts and theories behind the knowledge that's coming to me now mm. do you feel so when you have these conversations it's really interesting because actually just this morning I confirmed um another uh, podcast interview with um, somebody I've actually um, had sessions with in the past, an amazing man who also channels, he he speaks to Satyananda. um, And uh, so it's interesting now, you know, and thank you also Kat for sharing that. Do you feel when you have these conversations, do you, are you, are you having a nice kind of conversation, a chatter, or are you, do you feel like they are guiding you, you know, your purpose, your, um, you know, your, you know, your uh, reason for having been birthed at this time, mm. you know, what is it, what, what is it like? <laughs> um, well, as with, you know, it's, um, it's, it's different every time, you know, um, there are times obviously when, you know, the thoughts just drop in, mm-hmm. um, you know, and I definitely know that's not mine because <laughs> it's just, it doesn't sound like me. Mm-hmm. Um, there are many kind of writings and teachings that I do. So a lot of things when I'm in conversation with them will formulate over many weeks or months. It's almost like they kind of give you a little bit of information mm-hmm. and then you wander off and um, kind of interpret that. Mm. um a lot of the work I do you know and now that beautifully enough I've learned to kind of step out of the way myself and do it for others is um you know working with the kind of the kasha really so you know uh, get bring a lot of visions through um and see a lot of things you know I've, I've always been very visual so a lot of it I get is uh, visions and stories you know that sometimes kind of carry on for half an hour 40 minutes um and then at more recent times um because I kind of felt that um I wanted to be able to communicate these messages to other people because they felt very it felt very much like this was actually the kind of channel I should be you know all of the skills together you know the physical healing the emotional healing and this spiritual connection it, it, it kind of worked, you know, like what we call the three treasures in Chinese medicine. It was all three aspects. Um, so I actually went and studied um, trans mediumship, mm. um, which now allows them, um, it allows me to actually full altered state, kind of sit behind myself um, and it allows them to actually speak through me. Mm. Um, and so some, I'll tend to record those things if there's, if there's anything they want to speak to me. Mm. Um, but it also allows me, to um pass those messages on to mm-hmm. others mm-hmm. um but wonderfully uh, because i sat back here mm-hmm. um it doesn't drain me as much as a lot of yeah. the other work um but it's it's just constant really it's mm-hmm. um it feels so much more comfortable mm-hmm. um and it feels i think the main thing i've learned from it is that you know we all live in a divine embrace mm-hmm. 
and you know the universe is a good place you know it's always behind us um so you know it's that and nowadays I, I kind of laugh and I say well I walk with the divine because um little bits of knowledge you know I'll just be looking at something and all of a sudden it's oh this is that and that is that you know and I can be looking at the most you know kind of well not normal but you know kind of basic like item in the house that you wouldn't think oh what's that but all of a sudden this kind of knowledge and information comes through mm. and it transforms its reality to me you know so you know that's how I kind of receive stuff I write it down um and then thankfully you know I get to help other people with it so yeah I, I mean incredible um so you know now where where cat is today and the, and the work that you're doing which really is really phenomenal that you're actually you know it's it's this, it's this really it's an incredible usp because the integration of the chinese medicine with the energy work you know with really the channeling um you know with the transmediumship it's that's that's a you know that's wow you know i mean what a treasure trove of, of tools yeah. to be able to you know support your clients with so if there was one simple thing that you could recommend people do to change their lives for the better what would that be um well i i mean i think from from my recent times um it would be if you, if you have time or just to think about it to to sit down mm. and um to write your story mm. you know it doesn't have to be war and peace it could be a couple of sides of a4 and you know to to sit and read that and to honestly ask yourself is you know is this who i am mm. and is this what i want my story to be because we can change the story and we've been taught that we can't. We've been taught that this is you and that's what you're doing and that's it. Mm. You know, um, you, or we've been taught, you know, you have to find what you want in life and you have to be on your path and all of this, you know. We all want the same. We want to feel safe and loved. You know, there is, there is no other thing that we really need. Mm. Um, but, you know, when we write our story and we look over it, we can begin to recognise the, the things that we narrate to ourselves in our own head, you know, and we repeat these things again and again and again, and it becomes us, mm. you know, and rather like when I took the mask off with Tiger Bow, mm. you know, when we release those stories, we can rewrite mm. what we want to be and who we want to be. And there are no limitations, you know, dream big and then dream bigger. <laughs> Absolutely, I agree. And I think there's a difference between manifesting from um, from ego and manifesting from a place of presence, you know, yeah. and how that how that shows up in us. And, and it may be that we've had periods where we think we are in presence, but actually, you know, it, it, it can be that actually we were manifesting from a place of, of ego, you know, in retrospect. So I love this idea of, you know, of, of writing your story. I think that's beyond journaling. You know, mm. because actually it's really giving you a chance to have a, a moment to even analyze and, um, you know, and take a moment just to take a deep breath. And like you say, just look at everything from a higher perspective. Um, so when I, you know, like I say, and I said that at the beginning of the interview, you know, is the day I met you, I've, you, 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 you're such a solid being, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm like, this woman is always known. She's always known who she is. I feel that from you. Um, however, now, you know, with this unbelievable evolution in yourself and your life and, um, and, and, and the big shifts that are taken place, I have two questions for you. Have you always known who you are? That's the first question. And the second question is, um, who will you be in 20 years time, Kat? Oh, good one. Um, well, I guess I have always known who I am. Um, because if I hadn't, I wouldn't have felt so uncomfortable. The moments of being uncomfortable was when I was, I guess, being untrue to myself. Um, it was giving myself permission. Um, and I think even, you know, at the time, I knew who I was because that version of myself needed to be expressed and needed to be uh, present to be able to help me to peel the layer off. You know, I don't think any of us have never not known truly who we are it's just that we're like the onion you know there's so many layers to it and we all know you know as healers 
this is how it works you know when people say I want to be healed you think well you know it's a process of peeling off the layers you know and we all have these moments where we think oh I know who I am and then like three months later (laughs) it's like we've taken a complete turn and we think what was that about but it's because we've lay you know taken off the layers so you know I've always felt very grounded in my in myself to that point you know I I know where I'm going and and what I'm doing I'm quite determined like that um but yeah I just feel now that I've embraced other parts of me you know Mm. and they can be expressed more in who I am Mm. so you know I think I wouldn't you know it doesn't feel like it's something that was untrue it just feels like now I've been I'm able to to see more Mm. um and I guess the other question where will you be in 20 years um well I guess somewhere warm and by the sea would be a good start um (laughs) that's always that's a very human dream yeah um but I think as someone that likes to spend a lot of time uh, meditating and journaling and doing all that kind of uh, spiritual stuff and wanting to take more time for myself um that sounds like a much nicer place to do it um but personally I mean for me it's about continuing to, to peel the layers you know what really really excites me is this possibility of truly knowing self you know of truly being in a place where it's peace, you know, and I know that, you know, the further I go into my journey, the more I can help others, you know, without even them coming to a healing session by just being with them, by just being near them, you know, there is nothing else other than to exist that I need to do to heal others, you know, but it needs to start with healing myself um and I just you know I hope that I can continue to peel off these layers and you know um share this knowledge with other people and I hope to be able to reach more people um but I hope to be able to find myself within it rather than lose myself in that journey thank you well I that is a very liberating message, <laughs> very liberating message. And it's almost, it's, it's, it's kind of like, it's the death of the ego. And, um, you know, the, like you say, the rise of, 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 of the feminine, the rise of the divine and, uh, and opening up all of your portals. And I think that's what you've been doing this year is, you know, yeah. the portals are ready. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <the same. laughs> Open house. <laughs> Open house, yeah, brilliant. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you so much, Kat. And, My pleasure. Uh, and we look forward to seeing more of your work. Mm-hmm.